Herodotus opens his description of Egypt, stating that priests told them Egyptian culture had been around for 11,340 years, making it the second most ancient culture after the Phrygians. He claimed that once King Sometimus wanted to understand which country between Egypt and Phrygia had the most ancient language. To do so, he took two babies and secluded them from other people. They would not hear anyone else speaking. He wanted to see what their first word would be. When the children said, because, the word for bread in Phrygian, he deduced that it must be the most ancient language in the world. Herodotus also claimed that the Egyptians were the first to create a 12-month calendar, which was even better than the Greek one in Herodotus' time, as it was much more precise, and it didn't need an extra month added, like in the Greek one, after every few years. Also, priests told him that the first to live in Egypt were gods, some of whom lived as men, thus combining religious beliefs and history. Greek religion apparently imitated Egyptian religion, taking figures from Egyptian myths and transposing them to their own. In particular, the figure of Heracles and Pan were originally from Egypt. Heracles was considered one of the main twelve gods and apparently has no connection with the story of the Greek Heracles. However, in the Greek myth, he was a son of Egyptians, thus showing a continuity with Egyptian tradition. Herodotus also claims that at his time there was a story of the Greek Heracles going back to Egypt and being captured and offered a sacrifice to the gods showing how little the Greeks knew about Egyptian culture. In fact, it was considered sacrilege to take any life of sacrifice except a swine. Herodotus also says that it was thanks to Homer's and Hesiod's work that the gods got known in Greece. Customs that the Greek readers may have found interesting. He describes Egyptian eating habits, saying that certain populations would only eat particular parts of plants like lotus and papyrus, while others would only eat fish. As for appearance, the Egyptian use of dyes, clothes, and particular ways of weaving them, their use of gold chains and bracelets as ornaments, which were apparently uncommon at the time, since the, when these things were presented to the Ethiopian king, he declared the Egyptians to be liars and cheats. Horatius also writes about Egyptian animals how highly they were respected. Horatius in particular mentions cats and how it wasn't uncommon for domestic animals, including cats, to be mummified just as humans were. He also mentions other animals, but the Greeks wouldn't have necessarily have seen, such as crocodiles. Horatius also mentions uh, customs for the dead, mentioning it the particular ways to deal with the body, for example, the embalming the body to preserve it. He even mentions the customs of the living, which appear to have been the opposite of Greek customs, with women and men reversing their roles. The men were domestic, doing the weaving and such, while the women went out to trade in the marketplace. And other customs were opposites, such as where food was eaten outside the street, where the animals lived, which was with them as opposed to the Greek custom. And uh, priests shaved their hair, and mourning a death meant letting the hair grow. Um, people also washed every other day to be clean, and certain foods, such as beans and fish, were forbidden to eat and touch, being seen as unclean and numerous priests were given to one god as opposed to one, with no women being allowed to serve as priests as well. Herodotus is particularly interested in pyramids and the cities. He describes both the pyramids of Cheops and of Kepha, and recalls some of the building techniques he used. He said that this would have been constructed step by step, using levers to pull the blocks from, up from one level to another. Some of the stones were used for this particular job, while others had to bring the blocks from the quarry to the pyramid, using a road that was built for a specific purpose. After a blocks were positioned, the outer part of the pyramid would be shaped in order to make it smooth. He also discovered that during his reign of Sabacus, the cities flourished, due to the fact that this king refused a death penalty and instead ordered the defender to build something for the town. This brought to many big cities in Egypt, one of the biggest being Bubastis.